Welcome to the next video in the Search for Better Health topic. This video will be looking at two syllabus dot points, 9.4.3, identify the role of antibiotics in the management of infectious disease, and 9.4.3D, process information from secondary sources to discuss problems relating to antibiotic resistance. So first we're going to start off by having a look at what antibiotics are and how they work, and then we'll looking, be looking briefly at antibiotic resistance in order to help you carry out your secondary source investigation. So let's have a look at a brief history of antibiotics. So Alexander Fleming was a Scottish pharmacologist who was studying the effects of drugs on animal cells. Um, and in his lab, he came across a particular fungus that he called Penicillin notatum in 1928 that stopped bacteria from growing around it in the Petri dish. So as we can see in the middle here, we have this spot of um, fungus growing and there is no bacterial growth anywhere near that particular fungus. Then along came Ernst Chain, who was a German biochemist, and uh, Howard Florey, who was an Australian pharmacologist. And in 1939, they developed a method to mass produce penicillin. And basically what this meant was penicillin was able to be produced in levels that was then able to be shipped out, especially during the Second World War, and stopped a lot of soldiers dying from infections that they normally would have died of um, in the battlefields because they were suffering from mass infections that um, basically ate away at their systems and caused them to die. So what are antibiotics and how do they work? Antibiotics are different chemicals. So they can be natural, so created by microbes themselves, or they can be synthetic, so created in the lab, that are used to kill bacteria. They do not harm human cells as they only target bacterial cells that have the cell walls. So as we know, animal cells do not have a cell wall. So that's why these antibiotics do not attack our normal everyday cells. The big thing to remember is antibiotics do not kill viruses. So the common cold and the flu are viral infections and antibiotics will do nothing to kill them. Okay, so when you go to the doctor with a cold or a flu and you ask, for antibiotics, they're useless. It's not worth it. Okay, so how do antibiotics work? So antibiotics work in a couple of different ways. So firstly, they work directly by destroying the cell membrane of the bacteria. So basically by killing or destroying the cell membrane, obviously then the cytoplasm leaks out, all of the cell contents also leak out, and the bacteria is killed directly. Secondly, uh, antibiotics can prevent cell wall synthesis. So as we've already mentioned, every bacteria has a cell wall that is crucial to its survival. So it keeps everything contained, is a protective layer, and without the cell wall, the bacteria do not survive. So many antibiotics, such as penicillin, as we mentioned earlier, prevents the cell wall from being produced. So when the bacteria reproduces, the cell wall, not, the cell wall will not form and therefore the bacteria will not survive. The third way that antibiotics can um, kill bacteria is preventing protein synthesis. So we've talked a little bit about proteins in when we were looking at cystic fibrosis, and we know that proteins are coded for by, um, by genes. And just like us, proteins are absolutely essential for bacterial survival. So antibiotics can act during protein synthesis to stop the DNA from being transcribed from DNA into the mRNA and then into the final protein strand. So we can see in the diagram at the bottom here that there's a change in the, um, the ribosome. Okay, so the ribosome is the organelle where protein synthesis takes place. So if you have a change in the, um, the recognition site where the codons um, come and match up the amino acids with the mRNA strand, we're unable to produce a proper protein strand. So we can classify antibiotics as well. Most of the time they're classified into two very sort of simple to understand categories. So the first one is broad spectrum antibiotics. So these are quite general and work on many types of bacteria. So these are the types of antibiotics they use if you are in a serious accident in hospital, you're at risk of getting an infection because you have open wounds, etc. Basically, the first thing they will do is give you a broad spectrum antibiotic to try to attack any bacterial infection that may be taking place inside your system. 
then once they work out exactly what they're dealing with, they will then move into the second category, which are our narrow spectrum antibiotics. So these are specific in nature and they target only one or two very, uh, sorry, one or two different types of bacteria. So these narrow spectrum antibiotics are very efficient in killing those particular bacteria. And in particular, penicillin is a narrow spectrum bacteria. So the thing to remember is penicillin is not just one type of bacteria. It is a group of, uh, sorry, a group, one particular antibiotic. It is a group of antibiotics and each individual penicillin um, mold or penicillin species is able to combat a particular bacterial strain. So the doctors, they will carry out like our cautious postulates. They'll take a sample, they'll grow the bacteria in culture, they'll work out what that bacteria is, and then they'll be able to pinpoint exactly what uh, antibiotic they're able to use to combat that. So we're not going to go too much into antibiotic resistance at the moment, but just to give you a bit of an idea as to what it is. So antibiotic resistance is when an antibiotic has lost the ability to effectively control or kill bacterial growth. So basically the bacteria are able to continue to multiply even though the antibiotic is present. And basically it renders the antibiotic useless. So it doesn't matter how many courses of antibiotics you take, if the bacteria has become resistant to that particular antibiotic, it's no longer effective. And this can occur as a result of natural selection. So basically how natural selection works with antibiotics is we have a massive population of bacteria to start off with. So as we know, in order for disease to occur, we need a large number of bacterial organisms. And obviously, if we have populations in the thousands up to millions of individuals of bacterial organisms, there's bound to be a few that are slightly different to all the rest. And what happens is these um, bacteria that are different as a result of a mutation of some kind actually are resistant to the antibiotics. So you take the antibiotics and all of those bacteria that haven't changed die off. However, those couple are left. And as we know, bacteria are able to reproduce extremely quickly. So those resistant bacteria that are left then begin to reproduce. And eventually we have the same population as we did before, but now these antibiotics are useless because the bacteria that we now have are resistant to those particular antibiotics. This is a real issue at the moment because doctors are over-prescribing antibiotics. As I mentioned earlier, antibiotics are useless against viral diseases, but people go to the doctors and demand that they have a um, antibiotic prescription given to them, even though they have a viral infection, not a bacterial infection. Another cause of um, sorry, uh, increasing resistance in back, uh, antibiotic resistance in bacteria is the use of antibacterial wipes, hand sanitizers, all those things that the bacteria are being exposed to constantly and now they're starting to become used to those different substances and beginning to develop resistances to those. And another thing is uh, people throwing their antibiotics in the bin after they haven't finished a course of antibiotics um, and obviously they can then go out into the environment, the bacteria get exposed to them and those resistances can build up as well. So they're just a couple of the different ways that we can help to reduce antibiotic resistance. So how do antibiotics develop resistance themselves? So as we said, their resistance is due to mutations. So some bacteria can develop a pump. So when the antibiotics enter the cell, the bacteria simply pumps them out. So it's just like a, a constant cycle. The uh, antibiotics come in, the bacteria pumps them out. Secondly, uh, bacteria can produce enzymes that can destroy the bacteria, uh, sorry, the antibiotics, again, degrading them, making them useless. And lastly, other types of organisms can change the shape of antibiotics, so they're no longer effective. So this last one in particular will make a little bit more sense when we look at the immune response and see how um, antibiotics have a particular shape that work with particular um, bacteria and then works with our immune system. So anyway, that brings us to the end of this video and thank you for watching.